I'm moving now. Put that away, you. Hello! Hello there viewers, this is Flago Fogel here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the 10th, not exactly of the Mothers of Invention, but certainly the 10th in Frag Zappa's catalogue. Weasels rip my flesh. Okay, it's all then. Um, this is basically, uh, back in the day, the original Mothers of Invention, which is Frank Zappa's Apple band basically, disbanded around the time of the Burnt Weenie Sandwich era, which is the name of an album, I didn't know. So I'm guessing that Frank Zappa didn't really know what to do. So this is a compilation album, sort of, of live tracks and stuff that can go back in the studios as far back as 1967, this is from 1970. So, uh, a compilation of studio and live tracks. Um, you're probably thinking that's probably going to sound a bit different. Yes, it is certainly different, but never mind just for that. You don't have to worry about it being a bit sounded weird for that sort of sense, because Frank Zappa was known as a master producer and certainly disguises it well. He used a variety of different ways to sort of disguise things and jumble them up so it's sort of a half live, half studio, which he'd done plenty full and uh, the more well known albums like Joe's Garage or Garage as we say in the UK. But um, this certainly is different in its own sense because um, this is hard to say but this so far is the weirdest Frank Zappa album that was made. And this is because around about this time he was sort of experimental with free jazz with like hot wraps and bit of sandwich, but this he takes to a bit more of an extreme by doing really avant-garde stuff. And you can hear it straight away in the first track, did you get any on yet? Very frantic, weird alto sax progression that's going on. Uh, weird vocals by the different band members. There's a lot of different band members who do different vocals. Uh, Frank Zappa back in the day didn't actually do many of the vocals. He usually let his other band members do this. He, he really done this in the more mid 70s period like Overnight Sensation and Apostrophe. But you certainly get these vocals that are certainly different because not only do you get these high pitched vocals but you're getting these really deep vocals that are going on that sound like someone singing in the shower and this other guy who's making a noise that's an impression of a saxophone. Oh, like that. It's humorous, but it's not such humor that you'd probably laugh at and like go hoo 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 like that. You'd probably just do it when you listen to the album. Speaking of humor, this is the first Frank Zappa album I discovered because of my dad. He said that he was never a fan of Frank Zappa, but he had this album. and. Yeah, what a way to try and discover Frank Zappa. He, I was into Weird Al Yankovic at the time, so when I went into this, I was sort of hoping for like simple college humour, not very weird humour like this, and it scared us at the time. And But I even done my own painting of it up here. Now, it's not the best painting I have to say in future years, like now, but I have to say, this space here, I had an idea for. That's the only thing that's wrong with it, really, and the fact that his face is sort of turned into the background. I called it Weasels Rip My Flesh 15 minutes later. So, this is basically the guy's face uh, still shaven. So, I thought it was a good idea. And it's not bad if you think of it in that sort of sense. But, anyways, continuing. Straight after Did You Get Me On Yet, you certainly get a lot of diversity because the second track is not only a cover. But it's a cover by the 1950s classic guy Little Richard. Uh, the song is directly from my heart to you. And of course Frank Zappa has to have his own spin on it. And he certainly does. Robert Christgau said on his review of Wheels is with my flesh, I don't really like this, my opinions on that guy, but he said that it was a metal version of it. I don't agree. I, don't, I wouldn't call it metal. It's certainly more hard rock. Uh, probably because of the big guitar solo that you wouldn't really see in the mid 50s era that uh, I think the song was released in. But it's a very nice change and it just makes it so that any uh, Zappa fan or indeed any person should get some um, enjoyment out of this album. 
either way because this is of course a, a cover and is a nice easy listening song and you do get this on this album especially with songs like my probably my favorite song maybe is a beautiful instrumental called the orange county lumber truck um, a simple rock song which is known as um, a reaction to the Beatles all you need is love or no um, have a look what else is there and of course oh yeah of course uh, and known as a Frank Zappa classic uh, which could have been easily a chart rocker if it wasn't for maybe the sexist sound and title my guitar wants to kill your mama um, these three songs play in order and sort of like a big chunk, they flow really well and this is my, that's my favourite part of the album I have to say, but we get out of the way. Um, oh great. Awesome. But if you like the weirder stuff, you get plenty of that too. Like I said, did you get any on you? And you get the weird prelude to the afternoon of a sexually aroused gas mask. Uh, the Eric Dolphy Memorial Barbecue, the, probably my least favourite track, uh, just goes on far too long, it's like 7, yes, pretty much 7 minutes. Um, this is supposed to be an ode to the uh, avant-garde jazz musician Eric Dolphy, who passed away in about 1964. So I suppose it's sort of like a weird ode to it, I mean, I've listened to this classic album that's known by and gone for lunch, and it sort of sounds like it. And of course, what is known as many on the uh, Frank's Apple message board. So at least I don't know all that I'm not thinking likewise. Worst Frank's Apple songs, the title track, placed at the very end, which is basically uh, a load of feedback guitar, but it's very disturbing if you're sort of imagining the album cover and this at the same time. It goes on for two minutes and just. bleh. But. Um, oh yeah, of course that'll have to be my least favourite, not uh, Eric Dolphy Memorial Barbecue. Um, you also not only get nice songs, well, you probably think the weird stuff is nice, but you know, like easy listen. But there's a couple of songs that actually form both at the same time, and not exactly having, like, in one ear, you know, nice stuff and the other ear, weird stuff. It's sort of chopped in half, and this is seen at Tour to the Shore Forest, which is actually, I think, uh, the first part of the nice thing I'm talking about is a studio recording, and then the weird side is um, a live recording that was done. Uh, very lovely acoustic uh, guitars and sort of wah wah guitars going on. But then, this is what I've described as metal because it's got very pounding guitars and uh, pounding drums, sorry, and great guitars, loads of feedback and stuff like that. It's pretty kick ass. And, Obviously, like what I always love about live stuff, you get the audience going mad, which is also really cool. But uh, sort of done a bit worse is the song uh, Dwarf Nebula, the processional march on Dwarf Nebula. The first part of it is quite a nice little hummy sort of tune, but then it sort of sounds like, because I think the uh, this is the opposite, I think this is the first part's alive and the other's a studio, I'll have to be, because the studio part um, is a load of like sped up tempo, vocals and everything like that. This was done in 1967, so I think there might be an outtake of the Lumpy Gravy and Warnie in it for the Money era, maybe. And yeah, I prefer the Toads of the Short Forest, what they've done there. But I've covered every song. And so I finish. Overall, uh, I'd give this a solid 8 out of 10. I think it is uh, very recommended to anyone who's a Zappa fan. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a first listener, even though it does sort of have a good blend of what you'd think of the early Mothers of Invention anyways, of weird stuff, but more canny songs as well. Um, I'd definitely say it's worth to at least check it out on YouTube. And yeah. Really good overall. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon. And goodbye.